This video is completely unedited, so please bear with me a um, second time recording this because I rushed through it and I'm going to try to take things very, very slow this time because I know a lot of people are going to struggle. If you were self-employed or you own a business, should you buy your car outright, PCP, higher purchase, what should you do through your company, whatever you want to do? Now, let me first start by saying I'm not an accountant, so please check with your accountant. Um, if you need an accountant, message me, I can send you contact details for my one, really, really nice guy. Um, just be careful with the accountant stuff. So don't just buy a car through your company and expect it to be written off. That's not how it works. There's a couple of things I'm going to go over this video is cost of the car, PCP, higher purchase or buying cash, interest rates, type of the car, electric or petrol, monthly payments, investing elsewhere and your return on your investment. I'm also going to talk about what you should prioritize as a business owner, what you should try and pay off first and things like that. This is my personal opinion as well. Now the biggest thing you need to realize is buying a car, you can't just write it off depending on what you're going to be doing. If you're using it for business use, you can write off, um, it's either all the fuel or you whatever mileage you do. So if I was to take that my Audi R8 to a big convention thing where I'm selling my um, stuff, I could write off a certain amount per mile that I drive. Obviously in that thing, it's going to cost a lot more in petrol than the mileage. So you got to think of that as well. Ask your accountant once again, please, please, please ask an accountant about all of this because you don't want to get done by HMRC for writing off an Audi R8. Like I thought I could could do a couple of years ago. I was like, ah, okay, no, <laughs> no, I have to pay tax on that. Um, so first thing is electric and petrol. With electric, you get a lot of tax incentives incentives you can ask your accountant once again um obviously lease deals on electric cars i'm pretty sure you can, you can claim back a lot of it to do with the vat and the um there's a lot of different things involved so you can do some research on chat gpt ask your accountant but electric cars if you just want to save as much money as possible but get a car a nice car a nice take and turbo s you know uh, that's what i would recommend personally but for me i love petrol cars my brand new audi r8 V10 just sounds amazing, drives amazing. It's my second one actually. I had a Gen 2 R8. Um, I just fell in love. So I'm buy I bought this car and I'm keeping it forever. Now a bit about myself. I run multiple businesses and my main focus right now is my gym brand. I also do one-to-one -one mentoring on WhatsApp to help people start and scale their own businesses. You can DM me the word mentoring on Instagram if you're interested. I've got 35 clients picking five figures a month. Now, in terms of the car I have, I'll put a picture there. I spent £125,000 on this car. It was 140 and I negotiated down. I did £50,000 of a deposit because it, I sold my Audi Q8 for that much and I financed the other 75000 So that it's around about £656 a month on the finance agreement and it's 8.9 or 9.9 APR. Now, I'm going to talk you through briefly what PCP, higher purchase and cash payments are. Obviously, cash is just buying the car cash. You own it. You still have to pay the insurance, road tax, petrol, repair, servicing. That's all on you. Um, it's just your car. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can modify it, whatever. Another big thing is if you're buying a nice car like mine and you want to tune it, put an exhaust on it, you you know, you know have to consider that with higher purchase of PCP. But then another thing is if you modify a car and you plan on selling it privately, like if I sold this car, I wouldn't just give it back to the finance company and sell it privately. Um, just because you probably, I mean, if, if you buy a car for £125,000 like I did, and you're like, oh shit, these are only worth £60,000 now, you're like, oh, I'm going to wait till the end of the PCP term and just hand it back. Um, so you've got to think about the value of the car as well. If the value, if you plan on keeping the car forever, you can literally just modify whatever you want to it. You shouldn't do that in the finance agreement, you're not allowed to, but if you're planning on keeping it and paying off the balloon payment on the PCP, then you can. Now, PCP means you're paying... A lot less money per month, but there's a giant balloon payment at the end if you want to keep the car. So that balloon payment is £74,000 around about, I believe. And I'm paying £656 a month for that car. If I was on a higher purchase agreement, there would be no balloon payment at the end, but my payment every month would be double or triple. It would be all, probably just under £2,000 for a higher purchase agreement. But it means that I would own the car at the end of it, um, and the way the interest rates work with car finance is that most of the time anyway, at the start, let's say it's a thousand pound a month, maybe the first month of payment would be like a hundred pounds going back into the, the equity of the car and then 900 pounds of interest. At the end of the term or halfway through, it's 50%, 50 percent, 50 percent, so 500 interest, 500 goes into the car. So if you sell, if you put a 10 grand deposit and you pay the first month, a hundred pound of the car, 
and 900 interest, you'd sell the car for 10,100 if you were to sell it, if that makes sense, you get that back. Now, at the end of the finance agreement, it'd be maybe 900 going into the equity of the car and then 100 pounds of interest. Obviously, it's like a, a line of, you understand what I'm trying to say, hopefully. I'm gonna try to slow down. I know I speak very fast, so I'm gonna speak calmly. Um, now, interest rates, I would recommend going to a broker. Now, when I bought this car at the Audi dealership, they were offering 12.9 APR, which was, I think it was around 790 pounds a month or something ridiculous. But I went to a finance broker, I think, I think it was Magnitude Finance. If you want my finance broker, then car finance broker, give me a message over on Instagram um, and I'll send you over his WhatsApp details. I, th I don't exactly know who he worked for. I can't remember anymore, but really, really good guy. Um, it doesn't take much commission. Um, he just takes it out of the whatever he, he gets from the finance company. He doesn't take anything from you. Now, I wouldn't buy a car with over 10% APR, but it depends on your borrowing, um, if you can afford it. Like if you are barely making ends meet and you're getting someone as a guarantor, then you know they're gonna want a higher AP, APR of interest. So you might be you know 10.9, 11.9, 12.9. I've, I've seen people go 16.9 APR just because they want the car, but they're, they're young, they're stupid, they have the money. Screw it, you live life once, you know, enjoy your life. Um, just be careful with, you know, you might wanna just rush in to get a car. Like like when I bought my first Audi R8, my Gen 2, I rushed into it. Um, I think I was on a 13.9 APR deal, which was like 1,400 pound a month for a 77,000 pound car. Pfft, ridiculous, I know. I was stupid, I was young, I was 20 years old. Um, I'm 22 now and I've got a bit more sense behind me, as you can tell. Um, so just be very careful with that. Now, in terms of the main point of this video is if you are a business owner, if you are self-employed, should you buy a car outright or should you finance it? Now, I'm buying my cars personally through my personal bank. So after I've taken the money out of the business, paid corporation tax, paid my dividend tax, um, just keep that in mind. I'm not buying this car through the company because buying an Audi R8 through a company is probably not the best idea. And I don't think you can even do that. Ask your accountant once again. Um, for just what, what my logical thinking was, and I think this should be everyone's logical thinking, debt is a good thing. And if you would disagree with me, you're very, very fucking stupid. And that, just take that on the chin. Debt is one of the best things you can have if you're self-employed or on a business. If you work for a nine to five and you're in 50,000 pounds of credit card debt, then no, that's not a good thing. Don't take it that way. I borrowed 75,000 pounds for this car and I'm only paying 656 pounds a month to have that money borrowed, right? If I paid that 74 grand balloon payment off, I have no monthly payments and that's fine. And I do plan on paying off that car because I never want to sell that thing. It's 2023, November, December registered, I had it 50 miles on the clock, that's just under 2,000 now, and I absolutely love it. What best car I've driven in my life. And if you have a business, like I have a gym brand, Dark Stems, best pre-workout in, in the UK for the price and dosages. Um, you can get that code pre-order, tag down below, there's three flavors now, be here in a week or two. Um, I am buying more stock, and I'm also opening a gym. So that's 75,000 pounds, I'm borrowing that so I can get the car, and it's only costing me 656 pound a month, and I have another 75 grand now I can invest in my business. So if I buy pre-workout with that 75,000 pounds, I could easily double my money with that money, make 150,000 pounds in probably two months. So I'd be making like well over 30,000 pounds a month, right? Or once again, more than the cost of the interest. So if you have that 75 grand and you have an 18 month contract for 656 pounds a month like I do, that would be roughly around about 12, 13, let's say 13,000 pounds, be conservative. If I'm gonna make 75,000 pounds profit in a couple months, that 75,000 pounds have made me more money in profit than the entire finance cost. So that car is free, if you think about it that way. To get that car, it's not free per se, but put it, this is an easier way to make an example. Let's say 250,000 pounds, you have that sitting there. You wanna buy a Lamborghini, Hurricane, brand new, STO, just lovely car, or a house that you can redevelop and get a bunch of tenants in there. Uh, let's say the car payment's 2,000 pounds for Lamborghini, and if you were to put it into a house and everything, you'd be making 3,000 pounds a month when everyone's paying you. Would you choose the housing, get 3,000 pounds a month, and then you can spend 2,000 of that on the car and you have 1,000 pounds a month for free? 
if you disagree with that, you're an idiot. Straight up, get help. Um, the main point of this video is if you have money sitting there, you should you would rather put your money and in a appreciate appreciating asset, something that's gonna go up in price, like a house or your business, hopefully it goes up in price your business or you sell more, um, than a car that's just gonna depreciate and you're gonna lose money. Like I know I'm gonna lose money on that car, but I plan on keeping it forever because I love the car. And I know that's not a smart financial decision at 22 years old, but I'm making hundreds of thousand of pounds, millions of pounds, like I, I don't care. Like that is something I want in my life and I chose to do that. And yes, it's a silly mistake that I probably shouldn't have done, but you live life once, you gotta treat yourself sometimes. And that, I wake up in the morning with a smile on my face, I drive to the gym, blast music, terrorize everyone around me, and I fucking love it. Can't wait to get an exhaust on a body kit and huge, big ass spoiler on there. Um, and I also wanna do a big road trip. Anyway, I am, what's that fancy saying? I digress. Um, main point is, if you have money sat there, can you put that money somewhere else that will generate more money than the monthly payment of the car? In my case, yes. Me buying more stock for my gym brand will generate me more money than the £656 a month it's costing me for that car on the finance agreement. If you are sat there with so much money you don't know what to do with and you're going to buy like a 70 grand car and you have 500k sitting there, right? If you genuinely can't spend all your money or you don't want to invest all of it, then yeah, buy the car cash if you plan on keeping it for a while. If you plan on keeping a car for like six months to a year, then just PCP it and hand it back. There's no point, um, you know, putting all that money away and you can't do anything with it. And another example of this is this house I'm living in. It's around about a million pounds. It's a four bedroom detached house. I chose this house because I can run the gym brand from it. It's gonna save me a few grand instead of renting a unit. Um, and it's gonna, I can spend more time with my dogs and it's easier to just wake up, pack my orders and go back to sleep. Now, I was gonna buy a house cash for like seven, 800,000 pounds, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna rent and that money is gonna go into opening a gym starting next year. Now, this 3,500 pound a month, I know when I open a gym, it's gonna generate me a lot more money than 3,500 pounds a month, mainly because my mentoring clients, you know, I do one to a mentoring, 600 pound to 1,800 pound a month per client, and I have 35 clients making five figures a month consistently, and other clients doing under that. So, if I open a gym, I know for a fact that people, oh, he's a successful young guy, I trust him, I'm gonna buy his mentoring. So, I'll have the gym, um, memberships, I'll have the Dark Sims brand getting pre-workouts, I'll have the online Dark Sims online coaching, Dark Sims training ebooks, I've the, you know everything going on for me that it's gonna push to my mentoring as well. So I know for a fact me renting this place, yes it's throwing money away. It's kinda of like a car finance agreement in a way. But that almost a million pounds, I can put that into another investment starting next year and that's gonna ger generate me a lot more money than three thousand five hundred pounds a month. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if I had that million just sat there and I didn't have any ideas to open a gym, and I just maybe, maybe someone just passed away and I got a million pounds, I'd be like, oh, I'm just working around to five, right, I should probably pay off a house. I should buy my car outright. I want the least amount of interest and debt owed as possible. But in my situation, I'm in my growing phase in all my businesses. I need to put as much money into things as possible. I need to grow, I need to make as much, much money so it makes sense in my situation. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. I'm, I'm trying to make it make sense, but every time I try to explain this on TikTok, a lot of people don't understand it. So hopefully this longer format video has helped. Um, I would really appreciate a subscribe, a sub, just press the button, like the video. Um, if, we, if you can give me some comments on what you want me to go into depth a little bit more. Now, I know these videos, videos are unedited and oh, you're not putting much effort into the videos. I understand, I just wanna be consistent. And once again, consistency, as you can see in my other videos, is the most important thing in life. If you just stay consistent with something, become 1% better every single day, you will eventually just get to where you wanna be. And that is my philosophy of everything in life, you know? Same with diet stick to it as much as you can. As long as you're getting a little bit, an average, you're losing weight every single week, you're gonna eventually get there. It takes you six months, six years, you're gonna get there. Um, I was a little bit, that is kind of probably lazy if it takes six years to lose weight. I totally have not done that while balking. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, hopefully this video has been helpful. If you wanna drop me a sub, like the video, and join the Discord servers, the Dark Sims Discord for the gym brand if you wanna get some pre-workout, and my finance Discord tag down below as well. You can DM me the word mentoring on Instagram if you wanna work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I don't take everyone on very specific because I want whoever joins, I want them to be a successful client. But if you don't have the budget, my side hustle ebook's 25 pounds, tag down below. 
aim to make 200 to 600 pound a week um, and go from there. Anyway, thank you for watching. I will see you probably in a few days or I'll probably just give up and I'll see you in a week.